All right, Shalom, Shalom. Shalom. First and foremost, we want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rechakodash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone that rule well. Peace and salutations and many blessings to you, elect Akiam, across the four winds of this earth, kicking this word in sincerity and in truth. All right, I got the priest Aina with me. Shalom, Shalom. And I'm the brother Sha'ar. And we're coming at you, brothers, with a lesson. Lord within is edifying. And the title of this lesson is going to be A Prophet Like Unto Moses. All right, and as we sit back and really look at the similarities of Yahweh Shah and Moses, it's an abundance of them. All right, and you read it and you can hold it, Baba Gashah, Deuteronomy, the 18th chapter. It goes into how there is a prophet that was to come, that was prophesied to happen, that was going to be like unto Moses. Okay, and we're just going to pretty much touch upon some points which shows the mass amount of similarities to Moses and Yahweh Shai. And certain similarities you see that you might not have caught. Certain brothers might have caught it, but certain brothers might have not have. But when you look at what they've done for the nation of Israel when it comes to the deliverance, when it comes to the covenants, that they're off the muscle shows you that Yahweh Shai is that prophet like unto Moses. But when you even look at the little details of their lives, and everything they had a lot more similarities than what some of us could even think so what we're going to start off on it's not going to be a long lesson unfortunately i gotta go to work here shortly but um definitely wanted to put this on wax and lure willingness edifying to the body to the elect okay so we're going to start off on the book of um deuteronomy the 18th chapter in the 15th verse con this deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 15 yahweh thy power will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee of thy brethren like unto thee I'm sorry like unto me unto him shall ye hearken all right so it says as the brother just read the Lord thy God will raise up a prophet from the midst of thee mm -hmm. all right which clearly shows that this prophet's going to be an Israelite but he says like unto me mm -hmm. all right well, who's speaking this is Moses mm -hmm. all right go ahead uh, verse 16 it says according to all that thou hast desired uh, that thou desiredst of Yahweh thy power in Horeb in the day of the assembly saying let me not hear again the voice of Yahweh my power neither let me see this great fire any more that I die not go ahead and Yahweh said unto me they have well spoken that which they have spoken here's the key point verse 18 I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee and will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command them. Right. So it says I will uh, like like unto thee. I will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command them. This is how you know this is talking about Yahweh Shai. All right. Even when um, Yahweh Shai, Peter, James and John is on the top of the mount. During the transfiguration. All right. After Yahweh Shai was transfigured, the voice of the heavenly father said, here's my beloved son, whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Which shows you that Yahweh Shai is that prophet that's like unto Moses that we're supposed to hearken unto. Now, the point that I want to go into in that verse is going into like unto thee. Right. Because when you go into that word like. All right. In the Hebrew, the word is con. When you go into the word like. But when you go into the word like in the dictionary, all right, the definition goes into likeness or a resemblance or a similitude. All right. So more so, Moses, just as you have other prophets who played specific roles being key, um, precursors to Yahweh Shai, the example you had Joshua, mm -hmm. certain prophets played as precursors to Yahweh Shai. Mm -hmm. We all represent Yahweh Shai at the end of the day, mm -hmm. you know, but Moses was that exact precursor to Yahweh Shai within the things that he had done within the brother I not stated it earlier how he communicated with the Lord just like Yahweh Shai did he had seen the spiritual temple just as Yahweh Shai dwelt up there mm -hmm. Yahweh Shai is the close I'm sorry Moses is the closest in comparison being that precursor to Yahweh Shai than any other prophet why is that because we read in Deuteronomy the 18th chapter it says I will raise up a prophet like unto thee mm -hmm. So Yahweh Shai is that prophet that's like unto Moses. Now, within this lesson, we're going to go into different examples, start with the smaller things that ended up on the major things. Because, again, earlier the point was mentioned that even within their lives, 
they had similar lives, which shows you that they were like unto each other. Again, a similitude. Mm -hmm. Okay? So the first scripture we can pull up is going to be in the book of Exodus, chapter 1, verse 22. Okay. Yeah, whatever point you got, brother. Okay. Um, Exodus chapter 1 and 22? Yep, and then we're going to continue on to the second, because that's the last verse. Yep. And then we're going to continue to the second chapter. Okay. All right, Exodus 1 and 22, it says, And Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born ye shall cast into the river, and every daughter ye shall save alive. Now, the reason why Pharaoh wanted to do this, because when you go into this, before all this was taking place, we had actually dwelt among the Egyptians and everything was good. You know, we had dwelt in the land of, um, I believe it was, um, what was it, um, Goshen. Mm -hmm. It was in the land of Goshen in Egypt. And we've been there for hundreds of years. We was there for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. Dwelling, everything was good. Mm -hmm. But as Pharaoh seen how we multiplied faster, he had the fear in his heart that we were going to overthrow them one day. Mm -hmm. And you even read it in the Josephus. It talks about how Pharaoh had um, worry in his mind that we were growing to grow so big as a nation that we were going to make different pacts and different leagues mm -hmm. with the other heathen nation like the Canaanites mm -hmm. around that time because the Egyptians and the Canaanites actually had conflict with one another. Mm. When they had went into different wars, that's who they were fighting against. Mm. When Moses was that general, all right, that prince and that general leading the army of Egypt, they were fighting against those different heathen, those different Hamitic Canaanite nations. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when that's when you read that in Josephus, Pharaoh was worried that Israel was going to grow in number and overthrow them and join packs and make packs with those other nations. All right, so what did you? What did he want to do? He wanted to cut off the male bloodlines, pretty much. Because in order for the nation to grow, of course, you need the woman to give birth. But in order for that seed to stay, you need the men. So Pharaoh was going to cut off the men. All right. You keep going. Yep. Proves the bloodline goes through the men. That's right. Uh, continuing on, chapter 2, verse 1. And there went a man of the house of Levi and took to wife a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when, the, uh, and when she saw that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. And when she could not longer hide him, she took she took for him an ark of bulrushes and daubed it with slime and with pitch and made the child uh, therein and put the child therein and she laid it with uh, in the flags by the river's bank. Brink. Okay, cool. So that's the point right there. Mm -hmm. All right, so mother's, I'm sorry, Moses' mother, Yochebet, what she ended up doing, knowing that all the young men children were being killed and thrown into the river, it's funny because she actually did put them in the river Alice was commanded. Mm -hmm. It ain't her fault he lived. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But going to the point, Pharaoh wanted all the young Hebrew Israelite children in the land of Egypt to be killed, all the young boys. Mm -hmm. Okay? So how familiar does that sound? Because this is what happened around the time of Moses, right? Mm -hmm. Let's jump to the book of Matthew, the second chapter, and we're going to read from verse 1 and go all the way to verse 16, but the point is in verse 16. All right, Matthew 2 and 1. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, this is Matthew chapter 2, verse 1. It says, Now when Yahweh was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, mm -hmm. saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. Because it was prophesied. This is already prophesied to happen. Mm -hmm. These men, that's why they're considered wise men. Because they knew the prophecies pertaining to the coming of Yahweh Shai. Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead. He was born of the Holy Spirit. That's right. It says, uh, verse 3, when Herod, the king, had heard these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. Mm -hmm. So Herod, who was the ruler around this time, which was an Edomite, actually, who came from Antipater, who was an Idumean, mm -hmm. he was troubled, all right? Because Herod, even though he was an Edomite, but his mother was still an Israelite, all right? Meaning that he still knew, pertaining to some prophecies, he knew about Yahweh Shai, mm -hmm. all right? He everyone like, did. Everyone, That's everyone did. Jerusalem. Exactly, exactly. Go ahead. Uh, verse 4, it says, And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Mashiach should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, of Judah, 
art not the least among the princes of Judah? For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Go ahead. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. Mm -hmm. And he sent to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. Really privy. He really has a more insidious agenda behind him because this is an Edomite at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. But going to the point, he knew about this prophecy. He knew mm -hmm. about the prophecy in Isaiah that said a, a star, uh, 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 I'm sorry, a governor, uh, a government shall be laid upon his shoulders. He's the everlasting father, the prince of peace. All right. He was clearly aware. It says also too unto us, a child is born. When you read it in Isaiah the ninth chapter, mm -hmm. all right. So as the brother had stated, all Israel, all Jerusalem knew about this particular um, particular prophecy mm -hmm. because even when you look at Jerusalem, Jerusalem was in a very low state of being destroyed by those mm -hmm. Romans. Mm -hmm. So they were looking for that messianic savior figure that was to come. Mm -hmm. Only difference is Herod knew about it too, but he wasn't looking for it. Mm -hmm. He's an Edomite and he's in rulership, so he don't want no other king ruling over them. Mm -hmm. He was happy paying tribute to the Caesars and all of that. I mean, he was in cahoots with him anyway. He was an Edomite. Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead, brother. Got it, got it. Um, it says, uh, verse, what was I in verse 7? I read verse 7. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so verse 8, uh, verse 9, I mean. When they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star, which they saw in the east, went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. Which was a chariot, because that star moved from the east to where the child was. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. Right. You, of course. So you look at a star in the sky, you ain't going to just rejoice. Mm -hmm. But if you see a star do some crazy, magnificent thing and just move in the sky, you're like, oh, snap. Mm -hmm. That's a sign of something. Mm -hmm. Okay? Like, mm -hmm. this is a chariot. Right. Right? Right. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, verse, uh, let's see here. Oh, 11. I'm in, yeah, my bad. I was on the wrong page. That's cool. Uh, chapter 2, verse 11. It says, and when they were come into the house... They saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. Uh, and when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And this is the three wise men giving gifts to the child. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Verse 12. And being warned of the Most High in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Verse 13. And when they were departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared uh, to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word. Okay, flee into Egypt. You brought up the similarity earlier, going into Moses was in Egypt, mm -hmm. and how was I fled to Egypt? Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. go ahead. It says, For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Okay, so Herod wanted this young child destroyed, mm -hmm. just like Pharaoh had wanted the young boys to be destroyed. That's right. All right, but it even goes into it further once we continue. Once we continue reading, God, continuing on, it says, uh, verse fourteen. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt, and there uh, and was there until the death of Herod. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. And that's the prophet Hosea. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. It says, verse 11. Then, no, verse 16. Oh, verse 16, my bad. It's all good. Uh, then Herod, when he saw uh, that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wrath and sent forth. And slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and in all the coasts thereof from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. Okay, cool. So, well, not cool, but you know what I mean. Right. Just as Pharaoh had slain those young children, all right, due to an uprising, what did, um, what did um, Herod do? He did the same exact thing. Mm -hmm. He slayed those children. Because he knew that there was a child that was going to come. So it was like, okay, I can't find him. I'm going to just kill all of them. Right. Because in his mindset, I, he's like, I don't want, ain't going to be no king to rule. I'm the king. Right. You know, and plus he was 
Like I'm the king and my children's children's children are going to stay. The, they're going to stay ruling over this. Mm -hmm. All right. So one way to exterminate the king or get rid of that chosen king that was to come, that was prophesied to come, is to slay all those boys. Mm -hmm. That way he doesn't get nobody to rule over them. They don't get overthrown just like Pharaoh. So that's a small example to show that Moses and Yahawashai are likened unto one another. All right. Now we're going to go to another example in the book of Exodus chapter 2 verse 11. This is Exodus 2, verse 11. Mm -hmm. It says, um, And it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown, that he went out unto his brethren and looked on their burdens. And he spied an Egyptian smiting in Hebrew, mm -hmm. one of his brethren. And he, looked, uh, and he looked this way and that way. And when he saw that there was no man. There's the coast clear. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. He slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. And when he went out in the second day, behold, two men of the Hebrews strove together. And he said to him that, uh, that did the wrong, wherefore smitest thou thy fellow? And, the, uh, and he said, who made thee a prince and a judge over us? Intendest thou to kill me as thou killedest the Egyptian? And Moses feared and said, Surely this thing is known. Now, the reason why I wanted this precept brought out here, because you see, after Moses had done this work, had helped his Hebrew brethren and Moses was in a position of power too, he was still rejected from his brothers, from his own people. He was rejected. All right. The same story that we have to understand that Yahawashai went through, man. He was rejected of men as we read. Now, just for time's sake, if we can jump to the book of Matthew, the 13th chapter, because we can go into numerous examples when Yahawashai was rejected by his brethren, rejected by people. Yahawashai even said that, you know, as, as done to me, it's also going to be done to you. Mm -hmm. All right. But we're going to go to the point in Matthew chapter 13, starting at verse 54. All right. This is Matthew chapter 13. And we're again, we're going comparing the characteristics, comparing their lives on different things, comparing, showing you that he is exactly a prophet that's like unto Moses. Go ahead. Matthew 13 and 54. And when he was come into his own country, he uh, he taught them in the, in their synagogue in so much that they were astonished and said, Whence hath this man this wisdom and these mighty works? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? And his brethren, James and Joseph and Simon and Judas and his sisters, are not, are not they all with us? Whence then hath this man all these things? And they were offended in him. But Yahawashai said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and in his own house. And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. So the point is, Yahawashai said, A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and his own in his own house. Now, when Moses slain that Egyptian, he wasn't in the fashion at that time as a prophet, you know, but that doesn't change the fact he was still a prophet from the Lord. But the point is he was rejected of his brethren. Just as Yahawashai clearly said that you're going to be rejected of your brethren too. As Yahawashai was rejected. We read the example of Yahawashai being rejected right there. And there's numerous other examples to show you that Yahawashai was, was rejected among his own peers as Moses was. Just like there's numerous examples of Moses being rejected of his own peers but going into that point after he did that mighty work instead of saying thank you they said oh man are you gonna slay us like this egyptian and look all past the things that he had done mm -hmm. all right which just goes to show you that they're gonna have to play similar roles man right as moses was rejected yahawashai was rejected okay God. now um also certain points to bring out going into it you remember the egyptians were, were pretty much beating us down, raining hell on us with rigor. Mm -hmm. And you read about that in Exodus, the first chapter. We don't got to get it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But just as rigor was rained down, hell was rained down on Israel around the time of the Egyptians, so it wasn't around the time when Yahawashai lived. How do we know that? Let's just real quick go to Matthew chapter 11, verse 12. All right. This is Matthew 11 and 12. It says... And, uh, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, 
and the violent take it by force. The violent take it by force. Who is the kingdom of heaven right here? It's talking about Israel. Mm -hmm. All right. Israel was suffering great violence by those Romans. So just as those Egyptians, all right, were raining hell down on us around that time, we were still getting hell rained down on us from those Romans, from those Edomites, man. All right. So Moses was there as that figure around the time of the Egyptians, as Yahweh was that figure around the time of the Romans. All right. And also Israel was more comfortable with getting their ass beat and having Pharaoh rule over them without having a deliverer. Just like in the time of um, Yahweh Shai. Mm -hmm. As we can go really quick to John 19 and 15. And I'll pull it out real quick. Okay. This is an example. But they cried out, away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, we have no king but Caesar. All right. So Israel didn't want Yahweh Shai ruling over them. He didn't want him to be a prince and a judge over them. Just as they didn't want Moses to be a prince and a judge over them. When you read about their walk in the wilderness, they always complained about wanting to go back to Egypt, wanting to eat the onions and the leeks and wanting Pharaoh to rule over them. All right. So there's a lot more similarities than we think when it comes to Moses and Yahweh. OK, so another point that I want to go into, and it's alluding back to Exodus 2 and 14. OK, they made the statement pretty much saying who shall make thee a judge and a prince over us. Which was very ironic because just as they didn't want Moses being that judge and that prince over them, he ended up being a judge and a prince over them because he was chosen by the Heavenly Father. Now, when you look at it very spiritually, it's very interesting when you look at it because Moses was in a high place of rank mm -hmm. in the kingdom of Egypt. He sat in the palaces of glory. All right. He sat on the throne under Pharaoh. Yep. OK, he had that power. He had that status. But in order for Moses to deliver Israel to take them out of the land of Egypt, he had to be brought down in a humble state, in a humble fashion, just for Israel to be delivered out of Egypt. Does that not sound familiar to Yahweh Shai? Did not Yahweh Shai sit in places of high authority and rank in the palace in the temple of his father, sitting on the right hand side of the Heavenly Father? But Yahweh Shai didn't come the first time in that fashion. All right, he came very meek and lowly. To get Israel in the mind state or the state or the um, state of deliverance. Okay, can you pull up Hebrews chapter two verse nine, Bible Kishaw? Okay. This is uh, Hebrews. Hebrews two and nine. It says, "But we see Yahweh Shai, who was made a little lower than the angels. He was made a little lower than the angels. Go ahead. For the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor. For the suffering of death, when Moses." All right. When he had left and went to the land of Midian and he was brought back. All right. And he was in the wilderness with the children of Israel for those 40 years. He had to suffer reproach. So forth. Just like just like Yahweh Shai did, man. Mm -hmm. All right. He had to suffer their reproaches and all of that, man. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. It says crowned with glory and honor that he by the grace of the Most High should taste death for every man. And that was verse 10, right? Uh, that was verse 9. Finishing okay. out verse 10. And by the way, that word man refers to a uh, specific group of something where everything in that group is included in the idea. Okay. Cool. Basically. You break okay. Basically, uh, matter of fact, let me get the word. Uh, let me get that in, uh, in the ninth verse real quick and get that word here. Are we in John? Hold on. Let me go back to Hebrews 1. Hebrews 1 and 9. Uh, just to kind of clarify, because you'll say, oh, that's for every man, right? For the, uh, you taste the death for every man. That's not the case. Uh, I don't know, your phone's not really being very responsive, brother. So I'm going to just, it won't let me get the word. Like, I'm trying to touch the screen and shit. But, I was bugging out. That's <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was getting that word in Hebrews 1, and, uh, Hebrews 2 and, uh, and 9. Okay. Strong, Strong's G uh, three nine five six. Yeah. What word? Um, the last word, man, at the bottom. Yeah, every man. Mhm. Mm yeah. So that word here is uh, pass the water. Uh, Strong G nine G three nine five six, individually, um, and it says collectively. Okay. So it's a specific. It's a specific group. Uh, of people, man. Okay, for all, uh, for collectively the nation of Israel. Okay, um, now verse ten it says, 
for it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. Do you want me to keep going on that, bro? That was the point right there. Okay. You know, but pretty much, Yahawashai had to come within a lowly state of suffering mm -hmm. with his brethren. All right. In order to receive that glory. Mm -hmm. All right. But he had to come down. He had to come down from the heavenly throne, from the heavenly temple of his father. Mm -hmm. Now, we're using Moses again, which who was a prophet. That was which really Moses. That was a prophet like unto Yahawashai, if you want to get to the nitty gritty. Mm -hmm. But he had to be brought down from a place of royalty as well just to suffer the burdens of his brethren mm -hmm. okay god yeah it goes into uh it goes into that in hebrews uh, 11 chapter that moses how he basically didn't suffer the uh uh sin for a season i got it right here okay this is uh hebrews 11 and 24 by faith moses when he came to years refused to be called the uh, son of pharaoh's daughter choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of the Most High than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Okay? And that's exactly what Yahweh Shai did. He resisted the flesh, right? He walked in the spirit and he, uh, you know, of course was tempted, okay? Just like every man is. But in the end, he overcame. Now it says, verse 26, esteeming the reproach of Mashiach greater riches than. See, so they, first of all, let me finish the verse. Esteeming the reproach of Mashiach greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. Now, was it not Yahweh that was tempted? Um, uh, I believe that was in John, the fourth chapter, by Satan in the wilderness to have the whole, you know, the whole world basically under rulership, right? The same thing with Moses. Moses had that opportunity, but he passed it up, assuming the what? As the, the treasures, okay, of the kingdom of heaven. To be greater riches okay um verse uh 27 it says by by faith he forsook egypt okay and that's what we do in these times spiritually we're forsaken the spiritual egypt okay what does it say not fearing the wrath of the king yet did you how i fear the wrath of uh of uh you know of these um of these nations okay of these uh scoffers and scorners no neither did moses okay and neither should we it says for he endured as seeing him who was invisible. All right. So both of those men, Moses and Yahweh Shai, had faith that, uh, that Yahweh, the Heavenly Father, was going to uh, reward them for being faithful. OK. Uh, so let me uh, go back here. I think that was pretty much the point. Yeah. In Hebrews, too. OK, here you go. Come on, come on. Would you be able to go to Acts 7 and 35, Baba Kishon? That's the spirit. I had it right here. That's the spirit. <laughs> but again, it's going back to the example of Exodus 2 and 14, where those Israelites talked shit about Moses pretty much about smiting that Egyptian. Mm -hmm. But there is a point that I want to go into, because as we're, we're comparing Yahweh to Moses, and we use the example how they were in Egypt. We use the example how the rulers around that time slain the children. All right? We use the example of Yahweh and Moses being brought down from places of royalty. This example right here is going into how these two men were deliverers. Yep. Okay? So if we can pull that in Acts 7 and 35, Baba Gashon. Okay. This is Acts 7 and 35. It says, um, it says, and now this is the prophet, the beloved brother Stephen speaking. Mm -hmm. Okay? And he's talking to the wicked scribes and Pharisees, pretty much letting them know, giving them a whole rundown on history mm -hmm. of how they've always had the rap sheet of wanting to Persecute the prophets. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. It says, um, and th this Moses, whom they refused, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge? All right. And this is what we read exactly in Exodus 2 and 14. Go ahead. The same did the Most High send to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel which appeared to him in the bush. Boom. So that's the point that I wanted. Mm -hmm. All right. And that's the spirit because I stated that earlier. Mm -hmm. You know, pretty much how that was the most high's natural intention was to make Moses that ruler and that judge. Mm -hmm. And he put the spirit on those two Hebrew Israelite slaves to say who made the ruler and the judge just so he could play that position later on. Yep. But the key point going into that is the fact that he was going to be that ruler and that prince and also that deliverer that was to come. Mm -hmm. OK, so Moses was the deliverer to deliver us out of the land of Egypt. Who was going to deliver us out of the land of spiritual Egypt? 
spiritual Sodom. Yeah, how was shy? Let's go to it in Galatians chapter one, starting at verse three. Okay. I mean, that's what his name means. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, you say Galatians what now? Galatians chapter chapter one, starting at verse three. All and you right. said it, brother. That's what his name means. Okay. Uh, this is Galatians chapter one, verse three. It says, "Grace be unto you, and peace from the Most High, the Father, and from our Lord Yahweh Shai Mashiach, who gave Himself for our sins, that He might deliver us." From, his, uh, from this present evil world according to the will of the Most High and our Father. Now it says deliver us from this present evil world. Now, you know what I'm saying? Does that mean we're going to be taken up in heaven and dwell there forever? No, that's not what it's talking about, okay? Hey, you look at ancient Egypt. That was an evil world that we dwelt in, man, because that word world goes into the word society, okay? Just like around the time of the Romans when Yahweh Shai came, all right, what did they scream when he rode into Jerusalem when that ass? They screamed, Hosanna. Hosanna, and they had palms in those hands, which was a representation of, look, we finna be taken out of this place, and this is a representation of a deliverer to do it. Mm -hmm. All right, so just as Moses was that deliverer that had taken us out of the land of Egypt, Yahweh Shai is going to come in a magnificent fashion and deliver the children of Egypt, I'm sorry, the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. All right, and how do we know this is Egypt? We don't got to get it, but Deuteronomy 28 goes into the curses. How if we disobeyed the Lord, we were gonna, we were going to go back into the land of Egypt by way of ship, and also in Revelation 11 it says where their dead bodies shall dwell in the place which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where also the Lord was crucified, which shows you that this place America has to be this spiritual Egypt, this wicked, wretched place, the shadow of death. Okay, but we read in Galatians the first chapter how Yahweh Shai was going to come and deliver us out of that. Okay. Now, we're going to go into the last example of the similarities, and we're going to go into the covenants. Mm -hmm. All right? And we can start at Exodus chapter 24, starting at verse 3, because we're going into the reestablishment of the covenant and the law written in the exact order, I should say, that it was in. Okay? So we can start off in verse 3. All right. Exodus 24 and 3, it says, And he, uh, and he said unto Moses, oh, 24 and 3, And Moses came... And told the people all the words of Yahweh and all the judgments. And all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words which Yahweh hath said will we do. Okay, so he expounded on the words and the judgments to the children of Israel. Go ahead. It says in verse 4, And Moses wrote all the words of the, uh, of the Lord and rose up early in the morning and builded an altar under the hill. And 12 pillars according to the 12 tribes of Israel. So he built this altar and 12 pillars. Go ahead. Verse 5. And he sent young men in the, uh, of the children of Israel, which offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen unto Yahweh. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. Now the key points going into verse 7. And he took the book of the covenant. What is the book of the covenant? That's the law or the word, right? Mm. Does not Yahweh Shah come in the volume of the book? Just keep that in mind right now as I stated that. Mm. Yahweh Shah comes in the volume of the book. Moses read the book of the covenant to the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. It says, uh, verse 6, uh, seven. verse 7, And he took the book of the covenant and read it in the audience of the people. And, and they said, All that Yahweh hath said, will we do and be obedient okay so he read them the covenant he read them the book and they agreed to it go ahead in verse 8 verse 8 says and moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said behold the book of the co the blood of the covenant which yahweh hath made with you concerning all these words so that blood being sprinkled on the children of israel was pretty much the seal or the stamp of yahweh shai being i'm sorry of um, of israel being yahweh's purchased possession all right, that blood being sprinkled on the children of Israel was that representation of them being covered, them being purchased by the blood. But before Moses did that, he read to them the book of the covenant. He read that to the audience and then he sprinkled the blood on them. Now, the reason why I explained it like that, because that's exactly what Yahweh Shai did to his congregation of the elect. All right. Let's really go to the book of Ephesians, chapter one, go to verse 13. Matter of fact, I'll even read it because I can, I can pull it up right here. This is Ephesians 1 and 13. All right. It says, I'll start in verse 12, that we should be the praise of his glory who first trusted in a Mashiach and whom ye also trusted 
after that, ye heard the word of truth. You remember, Moses read the word of truth to the congregation of Israel before he sprinkled the blood on them, which represented them being purchased. Okay? He gave them the word of truth, and they heard the word of truth. They heard the word of the covenant, or the testimony. Okay? It says, in which ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom also... Suffer that ye believe ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So how are we sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise? All right. At the end of the day, the elect are already sealed. But what was the key component to seal the elect with the Holy Spirit of promise? Yahweh Shai's blood. Hmm. All right. That's why it says in verse 14, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession. It says until the redemption of of the purchased possession. What redeems us? Who redeemed us? Yahweh Shai. What was the fashion that he did it? Through his blood. Through his blood, we were purchased. So we're waiting for the redemption, all right, of the purchased possession, which is us. Mm -hmm. We're the purchased uh, possession, but we're waiting for that redemption. But how we purchased? That was through the blood. Just as Israel was read the book of the law in Exodus 24, and afterward, the blood was sprinkled on the children of Israel, that represented us being purchased. We look at it in a spiritual sense. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing coming by the word of the Most High. The word was brought to us, and we understand the word. Since we understand the word, we have hope in Yahweh Shai being delivered because we're of the hopeful elect. Whose blood covered the hopeful elect? Yahweh Shai. The elect are the only ones whose Yahweh Shai's blood covered. The elect are the only ones who are purchased, who's purchased by Yahweh Shai by his blood. Who well, I should say it starts with the elect. Even Israel is going to be good in the kingdom, but the elect are going to be the first fruits are going to be the ones that are redeemed mm -hmm. or the purchased possess possession that's redeemed. Mm -hmm. If that made sense, but going into the similarities, Moses read the book of the law. Moses sprinkled the blood to the congregation. I write the book of the law or, or the word was brought to us. And afterward, we were sprinkled by the blood of Yahweh Shai. Mm -hmm. All right. I got that in Hebrews as well. Chapter? chapter 12, starting at verse 22. Okay. Yeah, I'll just mm -hmm. use some PTO. You may read it? Yeah, con. Okay. This is uh, Hebrews 12 and 22. It says, But ye are come unto Mount Sion, and unto the city of the living power, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable uh, company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven. To the general assembly. Okay, go ahead. It says, which are written in heaven, and to the Most High, the Judge of all, and the, to the spirits of just men made perfect. Okay. And to Yahweh Shai, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling. And to the blood of sprinkling. So what does that go back to? That blood of sprinkling goes back to Exodus 24, when the sprinkle of the blood was put on the congregation, or the assembly of the church. All right. Now we represent the assembly of the church and Yahweh Shai's blood was sprinkled onto us mm -hmm. as that ancient sacrifice was sprinkled onto the congregation, which signified the covenant. Mm. This is going back to the covenant. Yep. All right. This sealed the deal for the covenant was the blood. Mm. All right. Yep. So for the brothers that are listening, if you see the similarities going into the covenants, how Moses and Yahweh Shai were very much alike. Even when it came to the establishment of the covenant by blood, it was in the same fashion. Only difference is with Moses, it was carnal. With Yahweh Shai, it was spiritual. Mm -hmm. That's why Moses is that precursor of Yahweh Shai, man. All right. And I'm going to end it off on this scripture here in Revelation chapter one. Verse, and I'll read it. This is Revelation chapter one, verse five. And from Yahweh Shai Mashiach, who was the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of kings of the earth. Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. All right. So we were washed from his, our sins with his blood. And that was also a seal. That sealed the deal for us to be pretty much his. That's how Yahweh Shai purchased us. It was through blood. All right. Just like how Israel was purchased through blood. All right. And also, too, it was a seal which made us the most high's people through that blood. Okay. So we see exactly how the two men had so much in common. And while Yahweh Shai is the prophet, it's like unto Moses. 
Do you have any closing statements? Yeah, brother. Uh, I was just looking at this in uh, First Peter um, 1 and 2, where it says, Elect according to the foreknowledge of the Most High, the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit. All right, it's a sanctify basically means to uh, to be pure, to purge yourselves from impurities. All right, but sanctification of the spirit. It says unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Yahweh Shai Mashiach, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. And you were, we we're going into earlier how the uh, the blood is basically the uh, stamp of approval, so to speak, um, of of the agreement that was just that was aforementioned. You know, and so. Uh, the elect, obviously, are those who are predestined from the foundation of the earth to get the word, to receive it, and to internalize it and live it. Well, that's due to the fact that, you know, uh, well, I should say that result of us believing in the words that Yahweh Shai spoke uh, uh, leads us to have the blood, the spiritual blood, uh, sprinkled upon us. You know, Yahweh Shai's blood. That's you know, right. Con. Con, beautiful point, brother. Beautiful point. Well, hey, man, we're going to end it off on that. Lord, when the lesson was edifying, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakodash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessings and much salutation to you, elect Akiyam, across the four winds of this earth, kicking this word in sincerity and in truth. Shalom. Shalom.